central to that cost is the state border closures. The Commonwealth, Andrew, working with the states to try and get more clarity on what defines a health hotspot and therefore what border closures are justifiable. Yes, Kieran. So the Prime Minister and Health Minister set to attempt to work with the Premiers and State Health Officers to come forward with a plan for a national hotspot definition which would allow states to open borders. It's been put to me the hotspot definition could come into effect when the number of new cases reach, say, 50 to 100 cases a day. But ultimately, it will be up to the states. The states will have to agree with the Commonwealth to the number of cases that could trigger a national definition of a hotspot to get those borders open. If the states can't agree on it, and WA and Queensland are particular holdouts, the borders simply won't open to places like New South Wales, which will continue to hurt the national economy and cost jobs. Federal legislation is seen by the PM as too heavy-handed at the moment and he told me this week it is a bit unclear constitutionally if the Commonwealth could even do it. There was an absolute eruption in the coalition party room on this one that saw many cases of hardship told by several backbenchers this week. We know about the Queensland case where Kimberley and Scott Brown lost a child after having to fly to Sydney for treatment instead of travel a much shorter way from Ballina to Brisbane. Well, the member for Mallee in Victoria, Anne Webster, in party room rose and detailed a number of cases where she and the Prime Minister's office have had to intervene to help constituents who live in Murrayville, just 14 kilometres from the South Australian border, who cannot get to Adelaide for the surgery and treatments, including cancer treatments they need. One is Parker Haywood, a seven-year-old heart transplant patient who needs to travel from Murrayville to hospital in Adelaide for treatment and medication every month. He was granted one exemption, then refused the second time. I've spoken to his mother, Shailia. He is five years post-heart transplant and needs to go there for various tests, checking the heart and medication levels. It was only after Ann Webster went to the Prime Minister's office that he was allowed to travel across after they lobbied the state government. Even then, the hospital in Adelaide insisted on full PPE for everyone all the way through the process. Then there's Josie Lum. A cancer patient, three and a half, whose mother has to apply for an exemption each time she needs to go to Adelaide for MRIs and CT scans to check on the progress on the cancer to her spine. Another terminal cancer patient Ann Webster raised was refused an exemption to travel to Adelaide to be treated. As one MP said to me after Ms Webster detailed these cases, excuse my language here, Karen, the MP said, we all thought... This is bullshit. Ms Webster told the party room about the border restrictions that this is un-Australian and she is looking to introduce a private member's bill against the border closures. Speaking in favour in that party room meeting of a lifting of border closures were Dave Sharma, Jason Falinski, Tim Wilson, Perrin Davey, amongst others. An MP has told me the PM's office is getting 30 heartbreaking letters a day on this, including the story of a couple who wanted to travel from Melbourne to Brisbane to hold the hand of their dying son, and it took a week and a half to get a permit. Other people are trapped overseas after visiting ill relatives, MPs have, have told me, because, and they argued in the party room that uh, Perth and Brisbane are only taking 500 international arrivals a day with their quarantining arrangements, and that's causing that problem. As one Liberal MP said to me, at the start of the meeting, Prime Minister Scott Morrison was saying he did not like what was happening with the border closures, but he understood why Premiers in Queensland and WA were doing it because of how it played electorally. But by the end of the meeting, several MPs have said, the Prime Minister had come around and was determined to do something to end these border closures. That was Tuesday. I asked him on Thursday whether he would legislate on the state borders, given he was legislating to stymie Victoria's Belt and Road deal with China. Would you consider legislating in order to take over state borders to prevent border closures where they're not necessary, something that's really harming the national economy? The constitutional issues around this are not as clear-cut as the constitutional issues when it comes to the Commonwealth's foreign affairs powers. It is important that we continue to remove barriers where they're not necessary and where there are barriers 
then we have the most sensible, practical and time-limited arrangements and people know when they can come off so they can get on with their lives. And on Friday, Scott Morrison spoke about some of the heartbreaking cases that had come to his attention. I've had hundreds of letters and emails from cross-border communities over the recent weeks and months, as have my colleagues, and they've shared those with me. And today we learn of the just unthinkable and heartbreaking case where a young family had to take their daughter, I think it was, to Sydney and sadly passed away. This is heartbreaking stuff. Scott Morrison at the Daily Telegraph Bush Summit in Cooma there. Now, Liberal Senator Jared Rennick, he told the party room the only reason the state borders were still shut is because the Commonwealth is footing the bill with JobKeeper. And here is what Scott Morrison meant when he was talking about that electorate support around border closures. An Australia Institute poll conducted late last week which measured which level of government was doing a better job of handling the crisis. Well, the states with the border closures polling better for the state government than the federal government with this question. So WA, 54% for the WA government doing a better job, 16% for the feds. Queensland, 34 to 24, with 31% saying both doing a good job. Victoria, feds ahead, 32-25. 31 say doing a good job after the hotel quarantine stuff up. And New South Wales, 26 to 22 for the feds, with 36% saying both doing a good job. Nationally, it's the states in front, 31, 25, 32, Kieran.